So this is the Sony ZV-E10. And you might have already seen people raving about this camera for its vlogging capabilities, but I reckon that this camera could be much more than that. So to put things into perspective, this camera has pretty much the same APS-C sensor as the a6400, which is a camera that cost quite a bit more, but despite that, this camera might even be better than the a6400. All of this did came at the expense of ditching the built-in viewfinder, but I'll take the flip-out screen all day every day. Speaking of that, this screen is noticeably better than the one on my a7 III. It is sharper, brighter, and now you can touch to focus, which is such an important feature on a camera like this. So in terms of size and design, again, it looks really similar to the Sony a6000 lineup, so naturally it is really small, lightweight, and easy to carry around, which is exactly what you need for a vlogging setup. But the thing is, this camera can do much more than vlogging. You can have this in your gear arsenal to serve as a B camera. Or heck, I know many people that use their A6000 camera as their main rig for professional work. I mean, although the image coming from this camera is, well, really good, but there is still one problem that might be a little annoying. The rolling shutter. So currently I'm testing the rolling shutter right now and yeah, it's not looking good. There's actually a way to fix this, but before that, let's talk about ports. So first up, thank god they did not use the flappy doors like they did on the a7 III. Now you have a proper I.O. door for all your I.O. needs. And this includes the headphone jack which is always a welcome. Well now, let's move on to video quality. Of course, coming from a tried and tested sensor, it would be really good. Sony's new and improved color science is looking amazing so far. By the way, speaking of that, since this camera only shoots in 8-bit color, Shooting in S gamut might just be a little too much for the 8-bit footage to handle. So instead, I mean, you guys need to try this. These settings are like the secret sauce for like 8-bit Sony footage. These settings are so good that I pretty much shoot every single video with these settings on. Like, it's just perfect for color grading. And for those of you who love to shoot at night, the low-light performance on this camera is unsurprisingly amazing. I mean, it's a Sony camera, what do you expect? So far, this camera sounds good. It is cheap, it produces nice images, but like all things, it still have its drawbacks. First of all, it only shoots at up to 4K30, and slow motion doesn't really look that great on this camera. But I get it, you couldn't ask much at this price point, right? But what I would really love to change on this camera is that huge crop when using Sony's active image stabilization. The crop is just way too much, and I would mostly just turn this feature off all the time. And now that leaves me with the standard mode of stabilization which is just the optical stabilization on your lens. This mode doesn't have any crop but it is not as good as having in-body image stabilization. Well other than that, this sensor is quite good despite being a few years old but like I said, it still inherits the dreaded rolling shutter effect. But you know what? I think there might be a way to fix this. So for that, I'll invite my friend Aryan to tell you more about it. Hey, how's it going everybody? My name is Orion and a couple weeks ago I decided to pick up the Sony ZV-E10 as like a B camera to my a7 III. Overall, I think it's a really fantastic camera, especially for the price. I just have one small annoyance with this camera and that is the speed of the sensor. The sensor is super slow which results in some horrible rolling shutter. And for beginner work, I feel like it's passable but if you're doing any kind of paid client work, I feel like it's borderline not usable. So I went online looking for some possible solutions to this problem and I actually found a very interesting one. And all you need for it is Sony's free Catalyst Browse software. So let's get that downloaded and I'll show you guys how to fix the rolling shutter. All right, so I've got Catalyst Browse open here and it's a pretty basic software. You'll find it pretty easy to maneuver around. I've already got a clip loaded and to kind of fix the rolling shutter, we're gonna go to the stabilize option at the very bottom. And it's gonna do its thing and analyze the clip and it's automatically gonna set the crop in at where it thinks the perfect amount is to stabilize the footage and fix the rolling shutter. But I often find that it kind of overcorrects itself too much and you can always bump it up and zoom out a little bit more. But let's just kind of compare the results that we got. So as you can see, this frame here looks pretty bad. All of the lines are crooked, even the clapperboard, like everything you see in the scene is just crooked. And if you go to the after view, I mean, it crops in a little bit, but that just looks drastically better. 
And if you want, if you find the motion blur a little distracting, I feel like you can bump up your shutter a little bit. But if you compare the motion blur on both of these shots, they're pretty similar. It's just I was moving my camera quite a bit, so that just causes that motion blur. Overall, I feel like the difference is really apparent, and that little bit of crop, I mean, it's totally worth it to just get such better results. Once you're happy with the results, all you have to do is go up to the export menu and just click on this little icon which is going to match all your settings to the source. And I recommend just switching the format to the XAVC intro, which is going to give you 10-bit footage if you shot in 10-bit. I of course didn't, but in case you have a 10-bit Sony camera, you have to choose the XAVC intro option there. The only real caveat that I found with this method is that you have to turn off your lenses optical steady shot before filming your footage. For some reason, Catalyst Browse doesn't like that and all stabilization has to be turned off before filming or it won't even show you the stabilized button that we talked about. But I feel like that's a fair trade-off because you're getting better rolling shutter performance and I feel like the stabilization that Catalyst Browse does is in general just better than the optical steady shot of your lens. So overall, in my opinion, this is the best and the easiest way to get better rolling shutter performance and more stable footage out of your ZV-E10. Moving on, the battery life I got with this camera is slightly better than A6400 despite being the same FW50 battery and this will get you around 85 minutes of runtime which is actually quite good for a camera this size. I found that this camera is really easy to use, there is not much buttons I need to worry about. I think if you're a beginner, you would really appreciate it. The E-mount also gives a ton of lens options to choose from if you decide to upgrade down the road but the 16-80 to kit lens is definitely a good start. So in terms of features, this camera packs in quite a lot. First of all, it has product showcase which allows the camera to focus on anything you show to the camera while still having face detection autofocus on which is pretty neat. Other than that, it has pretty good built-in microphone and it also comes with a cute little dead cat to cut out wind noise. I mean, look at how cute it is. And if you do a lot of content for social media, you'll love the vertical video feature. It essentially allows you to shoot vertical video and wirelessly send it to your phone using Sony's app. It is so convenient. And speaking of convenience, this camera also can be used as a webcam for your computer. All you have to do is connect the USB-C cable and turn on USB streaming in the settings menu. I mean, come on, why don't more cameras have this feature? Anyways, with all of that out of the way, I could say that this camera is quite a bargain especially for what it offers. I would highly suggest this camera to anyone who are trying to dip their toes into the content creating world. I mean with features like vertical video and product showcase, yeah this camera would be perfect. But for someone who already have a camera like the a7 III and now looking to get a B cam, this could also be a great option since this camera have really good image quality and it shoots in S-Log and HLG. So I think that would be it. Huge thanks to Aryan for helping me out with this video. That dude is freaking awesome. He works on big films so definitely check his channel out. I guess I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye!